so I don't know if you're familiar with Donald Hoffman. He has uh, this idea that in terms of uh, the distance we are from being able to know the reality, which is there, the physics reality, is we're actually really, 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 really far away from that. Yeah. So like it's, uh, I think his idea is that we're basically like completely detached from it. <laughs> yes. Uh, what, what's your sense? How close are we to the reality? We'll, we'll talk about a, a bunch of ideas about our beliefs in technology and, and beyond. Uh, but in terms of what is actually real from a physical sense, how close are we to understanding that? Pretty far. I'm going to use examples from what I do. Okay, so this idea that we're suspicious of what we actually think is real is not new. Of course, it goes back a long time, thousands of years, in fact. Yes. And philosophers, I, I'm not actually technically a philosopher, but I was one. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a professor of religious studies. Yeah, what do you introduce yourself at, like at a bar when the bartender asks, what do you do? I never tell people what I do, <laughs> especially on airplanes. Yeah. It's a bad idea. <laughs> Okay. So generally, if they push, though, I say, you know, I'm the chair of philosophy and religion, although I stepped down last year, so I'm no longer the chair. But um, I, I've, I have like a master's degree in philosophy, and I was a philosophy major, and I've studied philo I still study philosophy, so I integrate it into my research. Um, all right. So this idea that we can't know, uh, we're suspicious of what we know, is called external world skepticism. That's the official philosophical name for it. Um, our faculties and our senses don't give us accurate perceptions of what is there, okay? Especially at a quantum level or a molecular level. I mean, that's just obvious. So, yeah, so I think that you're, uh, the person you mentioned is correct in that. I think we're far away from it. I think you're talking about our direct senses, but, you know, we have tools, measurement tools, from microscopes to all the tools of astronomy, cosmology that gives us a sense of the big universe and also the sense of the very small. Do you think there's some other things that are completely sort of other dimensions or there's ideas of panpsychism that consciousness permeates all matter, that that's, there's like fundamental forces of physics we're not even aware of yet? Like, Oh, absolutely. I do think, and this is why I write about technology, and um, I I mean, that's actually what I specialize in is belief in technology with respect to religion. So in my opinion, thank goodness for, thank, for technology, because where would we be without it? I mean, frankly, I think that it's like Marshall McLuhan was the person who said, technology is, is like an extension of our senses. And I absolutely believe that to be true. I think that we're lucky that we, you know, that Prometheus gave us technology, okay? Mm -hmm. And that we use it and we're making it better and better and better and better. And that makes us more efficient. It makes us more efficient as a species. Um, and like, my point is, is that I think that our instruments I mean, I don't want to be a religious technologist, you know, but our our uh, our instruments will save us. I mean, they're already making life better for us. You think it's important that they also help us understand reality more directly, more, more deeply? But I think directly is a, is better than deeply. I think directly, more directly is probably a, a more accurate term for what you're trying to, I think, ask me. You know, can we actually, 